Let us begin. I don't know any Italian. How do you say, let's do it? Opposite of ciao. Welcome to the series premiere of Edible History. We're learning the stories behind some of the world's most popular foods, then diving into the kitchen to try our hand at cooking like the chefs and bakers of yesteryear. Today we're going to be discussing the origins of an often loved and heartburn-inducing dish called lasagna. Ah, lasagna. It's tasty, it's filling, it's dense, but where does lasagna come from? Italy, probably? Why is it like this? Has it always been so dense? Have people ever eaten it and then not immediately taken a nap? These are all questions and I'm seeking answers. Today we're joined by Linda from Salty Seattle. Hello! What's up, Hannah? Thank you What's so much up? For bringing me on. Can you tell me a little bit about lasagna, where it comes from? So, lasagna is actually super interesting. Italy is very regionalistic, and everybody thinks that they invented the thing. You have Sicily down in the south of Italy, and then you have Bologna, and they both sort of like vie for the inventor of what we think of as modern day lasagna. But the reality is, it predates both of those different versions. This poem that dates all the way back to the 13th century. He who looks at magnitude is often mistaken. A grain of pepper conquers lasagna with its strength. So that comes all the way back from the 1200s, which probably predates anything anybody was doing in Sicily uh, or in Bologna. Wow, that's super old. Was it always as, as cheesy and as saucy as it is today? Definitely not. Italians didn't even get tomatoes until like the, the latter Renaissance. What? Itself. I think of tomatoes as basically an Italian fruit. The original lasagnas were basically dry, cracky sheets with maybe a little bit of like a sprinkling or a smattering of some cheese um, and then maybe like some, some strange and esoteric uh, medieval spices. When I think about lasagna, I picture a big serving tray of lasagna and everybody's getting their own individual slice. Earlier iterations of lasagna, they would make like little like pasta handkerchiefs, little just squares, mm. you know, and a square and then maybe some bechamela, one of the original sauces, and then another square and then some bechamela. They would actually eat it off of hot um, spears or hot sticks. I gotta say that a boiled semi-spiced noodle on a hot stick is not what I think of when I think of lasagna. Today, we'll be making a lasagna recipe that's 700 years old. It comes from the Liber de Coquina, an anonymous cookbook from the 14th century court of Naples. Wow. Now, as Linda told us, this won't end up looking anything like the lasagna we know and love. In fact, the only ingredients that the recipe calls for are semolina flour, water, cheese, and medieval spices like cardamom, clove, and cinnamon. I've never thought of adding those to my lasagna, never even once. So to begin, let's make our dough. Semolina flour plus water equals dough for me to eat. To make my pasta, I'm gonna start by dumping out my semolina flour and making a well. And then using our finger, we're gonna make it deeper. Nice. Now we're gonna pour some water into this well and then start to gently stir it together. We're gonna add a little more water. And, oh yeah, baby. Semolina, I barely know her. It feels a little granular and it's still falling apart at the edges, so just keep kneading until it becomes nice and smooth and then when you poke it, it springs back at you. You know, you can really feel this ugh, in your wrist, which is probably why Italian grandmas have such strong hands. We're gonna put it in a little ball now. This is looking pretty smooth to me. Now, we just gotta give it a little poke and see if it springs back at us. A doing! So we're done with our dough. Now we just have to let it rest for 30 minutes. Good night, little dough. When you wake up, things are gonna get weird. Oh, voila! Wow, what a well-rested dough. Now I'm gonna roll it out basically as flat as I can. Dee -dee. <sighs> Sorry. Reflex. We're gonna sprinkle a little flour on to make sure it doesn't stick. Wow, it's gonna take a minute to get this thing flat. Do a little of this, 
This is a pro move. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's called, Ow, My Hands Hurt. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's check, and nope. That is not thin enough. We can get thinner than this. Let's go. So my cutting board is a little bit too small for the depth and width I want to roll out. So I'm actually just going to trim some of the edges and set the rest aside. Great. Now let's just keep on rolling. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, this, this is looking like pasta. This looks pretty dang thin to me and it feels so good. It's so fun to hold. It's like holding flesh. The next step is to cut our pasta into squares three fingers long and wide because it's a square. Now I was pretty hesitant when it said cut it into squares because um, isn't lasagna like a rectangle? But that's what the Latin said to do. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> Oh, shoot. I haven't measured. Whew. I'm sure you've noticed by now, rabid Edible History fans, but uh, this is not your standard tasty fare, okay? And that's not them, that's me. These lines look plenty straight. We got our squares cut and ready to go, so next step is to boil them. Wait, patience is a virtue. We're gonna take our little pasta squares and boil them in salted water for about two to three minutes a piece. Now I'm just gonna take out my tiny squares and set them aside to cool before I add all of my tasty goodness. I am genuinely curious about how this is gonna work out. Okay, here we are. The home stretch. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our individual squares, layer them with cheese, add some spices, and just keep going until we feel like stopping or we run out. One, two. We'll be using goat cheese. We're also gonna be adding a little Parmesan because it's my show, we can do whatever we want. And also a little feta. Let's see how these all taste together. Now we're gonna add a little layer of clove and then place on top. Because the steps are so vague, I'm gonna add one spice at a time, instead of putting all the spices on every layer. Ooh la la, it's looking like lasagna already. Voila. Now looking at this, I'm gonna take a little bit artistic liberty and maybe just put a gentle sprinkle of feta and Parmesan over it. Little feta makes it better. I'm very rustic with my plating, you know? Gives it a little bit of that je ne sais quoi. And, <laughs> Last but not least, we'll eat it exactly as the recipe tells us. It says, with a wooden stick. Okay, so, bon appetito. This is pretty neato. So I guess, I don't, I don't really know how, if I'm supposed to flip it upside down and eat it. Yeah, okay. Wow, I mean, let's be honest, the wooden stick really works. It pretty much holds it all together. <sighs> Cheers. You know, I don't know if I need this wooden stick, but this is not bad. It kinda tastes like arugula, like a, cheesy, noodly, cinnamon, cardamomy, clovey dessert. It's not the most balanced array of spices, but honestly, I feel like with time and with practice, this could turn out pretty good. I would definitely want to bake it though. I think that would just make it so much better. Despite them looking and tasting so different, I can really see how this later evolved to becoming what we consider lasagna. It goes to show that no matter how far back you go in time, some dishes are just good. Oh, mmm, I kinda dig it. Who'd have thunk? What a tasty little thing. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Edible History. I, for one, am excited to see where our taste buds take us next.